as several of you said, many of the priorities of the current that the current council have been or are, are in the way of being addressed. So what I'd like to know is if elected, what is the one new priority you'd like to set for the council and the city? Boy, a new priority, because I think we've done a real good job addressing some of the major problems. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't call water a new priority, but in light of this increase that's coming, um, we really need to address the, the infrastructure you know, we, we've got crumbling water mains, and when one of those breaks, the cost to repair that is, it's, it's just not effective to run a business that way. So we really have to start uh, putting money in some of these capital projects. We, we've we um, really backed off having to lay off a lot of people like Springfield. I mean, I, I think the staff has done a real good job uh, dealing with this uh, economic downturn, but the the thing that has suffered the most because of this has been capital projects. So I think we, just like the federal government and the states trying to do the same thing, I think the city of Decatur has to start a capital project. And most of that would be water-related, so water funds would uh, be able to, you know, with the, the increase in the water rates, we should be able to deal with some of these problems. But they're literally crumbling. They haven't been addressed uh, Decatur has a, a real history of, of not addressing something until it gets so bad, and then it's like we're punching everybody in the gut wanting this uh, rate increase. And, uh, but it's inevitable. So we, uh, like a poison pill, we got to take it now because the alternative is not real good. Thanks. Jerry? <clears throat> um, uh, once again, I, I deal with the water. Uh, issue again, um, and if you don't mind, let me expound on that. The water issue, uh, we just come off a two-year drought, and in that two-year drought, we uh, uh, asked to the city, the people of the city of uh, Macon County and Decatur to raise the water rates. I think that's a very time-sensitive issue coming off a two-year drought, and I understand that there is some, the water means uh, that's old and, and it needs some attention, but at the same time, with the unemployment being as high as it is, um, we go and ask for a 100% increase in water, which is not uh, feasible to the people. Uh, and when I say that is because we had a drought and we've asked people to uh, reserve uh, to come the next following year and ask for a raise. Um, one, we must articulate, uh, council must articulate the reason for it. Uh, with sensitivity and make sure we have an understanding um, while we're running the water rates. Make sure that is very transparent and is very accessible knowledge-wise. Um, as far as council uh, with the the current development in the city, um, yes, I'm, I'm not completely understanding the whole TIF. I'll do a little study, more study on that. But at the same time, um, we need to bring about... Um, a change where it's going to involve everyone here in the city. Okay. okay. Thanks. Pat? Well, I think as a, a council person, uh, you have to, uh, your priorities are in today and and uh, planning for tomorrow. I always say have one one foot in today and uh, in today's world to make sure you you uh, provide the, the services that a government should provide, basic services to uh, make your citizens happy so they'll stay here. Again, if we lose more population, that, don't, that hurts us not only uh, we're losing good workers, but we're also losing uh, uh, property tax uh, if the homes don't sell, uh, sales tax. Um, but also we have to have one foot into the future and plan. I mean, uh, a plan for the future on, on priorities is about everything. I, I have to be, you know, I'm not trying to skirt the... Uh, it's it's water. It's it's economic development. They all kind of tie in together, and uh, you know whether it's a pothole in the street uh, or it's a guttering that needs to be done. And, and as uh, uh, Mr. Dawson has talked about the the water mains, again we want to keep our people here. We want to keep our businesses here. So our priority is really kind of a, a, a shotgun effect. We have to do a lot of things, and again that goes back to working with with other uh, uh, taxing agencies to see how we can 
combine our limited resources to get some of these things done. Again, being realistic, know your market. That's how I look at it. Not just throwing money at, at, at a priority sometimes doesn't always work out. Uh, utilize that money. People are tired of paying tax, additional taxes, high fees and that. So uh, there's there's a, a, going to be a rebellion coming. And uh, we all pay the same taxes and that. And in a couple of years, I'll be on a fixed income when if I ever retire. Um, so uh, we just have to be, again, think of today, but plan for tomorrow. Thanks, Julie. Well, I'm really not about starting a bunch of new programs or anything like that. I think government really ought to be pretty basic. What a city council and what um, even a state legislature do, it's what ordinary citizens can't do on their own. Government, city government to me is about um, public safety, police, fire, uh, safe, clean water, good supply, um, sewers, the stuff that's not all that sexy and not all that fun. Uh, the downtown project it, that's fun, okay? It, you can look at uh, the improvements and go, wow, I got to be a part of that, and, and it's tremendous, and I think that's a huge asset for the city. But, you know, I, I kind of agree with what Pat was saying. You know, you've got your priorities. Um, it's everything. You know, you have to, everything going a lot of balls in the air at the same time. Um, water is probably the number one priority we need to get solved and get fixed. And the water mains that are that are old and falling apart, you know, we haven't done much in the way of preventative maintenance in this community. And it's kind of like we kick the can down the road and kick the can down the road uh, to, the, to the next time because nobody wants to have to face after we've got to pay for this now to, to fix it. So I think, you know, as painful as the water rate increase is, it probably the timing is good for that because people really understand what a crisis we were in last summer. I mean, we were shutting down businesses. We were putting more people out of work because we just didn't have the water supply because it hadn't been dealt with earlier. You know, we may not have another drought for another hundred years, but I don't want to be in that position. And having a reliable water supply and additional water source is incredibly important. When you work in economic development and you've got, you know, businesses looking, companies looking at where am I going to locate this plant? Well, you can't say, well, gee whiz, if you come here, we'll build your water supply in the next five, ten years. It'll be great. You have to have it because all economic development is is the, is the process of elimination. They're looking at where not to put something and cutting it down to the best place that they can go.